Hey everyone, this is Kadisha Najmi here and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to be doing two hacks using the fluted panel molding. So let's get right into it. Most of you have already seen this hack on Pinterest or Instagram and I actually also got my inspiration from a page I follow on Instagram and a Pinterest post so I'm going to link both of those below for you guys so you guys can check it out on your own time but today we're going to be doing this hack on two completely different pieces of furniture my TV stand and a drum roll please IKEA Addicts Desk Now we all love those IKEA hacks don't we? I do but this one is a one-of-a-kind, never-seen-before hack. So you guys do not want to miss this video and stay till the end. So first, I'm going to start with my TV stand, share some tips and step-by-step -step tutorial on how I apply the panel molding. And then I'm going to use the same steps used on my Alex desk. So it kind of made sense to put it on the second half of the video. But you're going to love both hacks. They're so amazing. They turned out great. So let's go ahead and get started. My TV stand has two glass doors and I really wanted it to be used as storage and not all the storage items look cute so I wanted to cover them up. Bringing you guys a little bit closer to show you what I'm going to be covering. Before I wanted to cover from top all the way to bottom but then I realized that there is a little bit of an opening in the middle and it does not line up so I decided to then cover just the door itself from left to right and then do the same on the other door as well. After I measured the door I went ahead and used the measuring tape to measure my molding to the length I desired and then used a pencil to mark my measurements and then I used a saw and melter box to do my cutting at home this tool is very useful if you do all your cuttings at home. Now the next tip that I found very helpful was to actually use my already cut pieces to create my next measurement instead of using the measuring tape over and over again. I use this piece and then draw a line with my pencil to get the exact measurement. And then I lined it up with the 90 degree opening on the melter box and then made my exact cuts. I followed the same steps for 10 cuts, 5 for each door. Okay, so I took out all the hardware on the door, including the cabinet poles and the little door hinges. And then I gave my panel molding a little dust with my 220 grit sandpaper because there was a little bit of white stuff coming off. And then I also sanded the top of my door lightly as well, so that way I can create a rough surface for my glue to attach uh, better. And then I went in with my dust cloth, uh, cleaned out all the dust that was left behind by the sandpaper. Okay, so do not leave your glue hanging out like that on your floor because it is going to mess up your floors. <laughs> but I'm using liquid nails and I put it on a caulking gun. I believe that's what it's called. Uh, but you don't have to use liquid nails. You can use any strong glue. I don't know why I'm using this. I guess I read it on a blog somewhere that they used it. So I did it too. Um, but it was really hard for me to take the glue out, so I had to ask my husband to help me a lot in this project. <laughs> but yeah, so put the glue on and then attach the pieces on it. And make sure they line up properly so that way there is no unevenness. And then if there is any glue coming out from the side, you can wipe that off. Make sure to put a book on top of it because it is going to need that force to stick. You can also use clamps, but I didn't have any clamps, so that was my solution. And then do the same thing for the rest of the panels. I have five, so I'm just going to put in five. I did that for both of my doors, and I'm going to leave them there getting dry for two hours, two to three hours. And then once you're done, um, this step is an extra step just to make sure that everything looks nice and clean. I'm using caulking so I can fill up the empty spaces that were left in the middle of each panel. 
and then I'm using my finger to push the caulk into the middle of the spaces and after that I went in with a wet cloth to clean all the spillage from the caulking before it dries off and continue this step over and over until you're finished with the entire door or all the project. Using a filler like that definitely makes a big difference. As you can see, there are no empty spaces anymore and it looks very uniform throughout the door. And I did that on both of my doors and once it dries off, which was after four hours, I went ahead and uh, used my drill to drill the holes so I can put back the cabinet poles that I took off in the beginning of this video and then I put the uh, door hinges back on and then put both doors back onto my TV stand and the finished product is amazing. I decided not to paint it yet but I did find the perfect white paint for these cabinet doors so I'm gonna go ahead and paint them probably after the video and post it on my Instagram. And if you don't follow me on Instagram at lovelymisskd, you may do so now so you can see the finished and final product after the painting is done. OMG, that came out amazing, guys. Comment below if you're going to try this hack at home. And uh, if you're really liking this video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I love being creative and bringing these amazing videos for you guys to watch. And now moving on to the attic desk. I did not know I was going to be doing this hack, but I had a lot of panel molding left over from the previous project. So I started playing around and I've been wanting to transform my Alex desk for a long time. So as I was playing around, it just, it just kind of clicked and I ended up transforming the desk. So let's go ahead and watch how I did that. Okay guys, I started off by putting the glue that I already had on hand from the previous project and put it on the drawer fronts. Then I attached the pieces that I cut longer than the size of the drawer because I wanted them to overlap, creating a very nice clean look. I would definitely recommend laying the table flat so the drawers are facing the ceiling when drying or using clamps to make sure that the molding pieces do not move. I had a lot of trouble keeping the pieces up, so I had to constantly check and move them accordingly. Or you can use a faster drying glue so you can skip this step altogether. I added six and a half pieces, 4.5 inch length on each drawer I wanted to cover. Left a small space in the middle of the two drawers so they move in and out easily. Once the glue dried off, I applied the caulk filler to fill in the spaces like I did with my TV stand. I was going to stop here, but then I decided to take the legs off my desk and spray paint them. I couldn't decide between the colors, so I used Krylon brand metallic rose gold for my first coat. I didn't really like the finish, so I went ahead and used the metallic copper color, same brand, and did almost three to four coats. In this project, I actually used two full cans of the metallic copper. The key to spray painting is to go in swiping motions left to right to avoid any drips. Here's my demonstration on a piece of molding that was left over. I also had these cabinet doorknobs in silver or I guess chrome color from when I did my bathroom. But to match the legs, I also spray painted them metallic copper and coated them with a rust proof metallic spray, which had a very glittery finish and it kind of made them look very nice. But I will link all the products in my description box so you guys know exactly what I used. I let everything dry overnight and uh, the next morning I made my measurements with my measuring tape to make sure that the door knobs are aligned right in the middle. And then I use my drill to create a hole for my drawer knobs. I assembled the legs and screwed them back to my Alex desk using an Allen wrench which came with it. I found the perfect white paint in my paint closet that I used for a previous project and it matched perfectly with the white of this Alex desk. I prepped the area by clearing 
cleaning any dirt or oils using a wet cloth. After that was dry, um, I went in with a mini paintbrush to cover the top of the molding and then used a regular paintbrush to do the rest. Note that I am positioning the paint container right underneath where I'm painting to catch any drips. Once the paint dried out after, let's say, three to four hours, I put the knobs on and made sure the drawers opened and closed perfectly, and I was done. I didn't think I was going to be able to pull it off, but it worked. I mean, the color definitely is the perfect color. It makes this desk look so custom made, uh, expensive, something that you will find at West Alamar CB2. It definitely does not look like an Ikea desk. <laughs> what do y'all think? I mean, definitely leave a comment below if you're going to try this hack out. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. Guys, I am going to be doing a home office room makeover video soon to transform the home office you saw earlier in this video where my attic desk was. So don't forget to hit subscribe and ring the notification bell so you get notified of when I post that video. Guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video today and inspired you to do something similar. And again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.